Hello, this is Dr. Phil Rosencrantz again. Welcome to EGR 403 Online, Part 3. Uh, this presentation is titled Break-Even Analysis, Part 1. On slide number 2, we're looking again at the big picture, and we see we're still setting the framework for this course in the uh, area of break-even analysis. Slide number 3, uh, the break-even analysis is important, I think, because it helps engineers understand the big picture of, of profitability. It's how you can take profit and uh, look at it and, and get a feel for how whatever project you're working on will contribute to um, the profit of the company. This is very important because when you're trying to sell your idea, if you're trying to evaluate your idea, if you're trying to uh, determine where the value really is, being able to put it in terms of break-even analysis will help you uh, with upper management and help you with your analysis. On slide number four, uh, we're reviewing for a moment a um, couple of things from the profit and loss statement because these are the elements of the break-even analysis. Fixed costs, which we said are items that don't vary throughout the year. Variable costs, items that vary with our volume of production. We mentioned before labor and materials and supplies. But another variable cost that I wanted to mention is called overhead. And this is an allocation of things like utilities, you know, heat, water, um, light. And uh, those expenses are very often added up and then allocated to various products using a uh, technique called a burden rate and uh, that what that does is it allocates so much of the overhead expense to say each um, hour of, of work that goes on of labor that goes on so that's that's another kind of expense I'm not going to get into too much detail on that because there are some newer techniques being used that uh, are slightly different than that and so if you hear about something called activity-based costing or ABC uh, costing, you'll realize that there are different methods that can be used here. Again, the profit equation comes into play. Profit equals revenue minus expenses. Okay, let's move to slide number five. Break-even volume is what I want to talk about now. And uh, we need to establish... Uh, the total variable cost as an equation and it's a function of the number of units sold so the total variable cost is the variable cost per unit in other words how much are we spending for each uh, unit that we're producing for the variable items labor materials and we want to multiply that by how many units we sell and that's our total variable cost our total cost, therefore, is the sum of the fixed cost plus the total variable cost. And you'll see in, in a future slide from a graph what that looks like. Revenue is also a function of the units sold. It's a function of our selling price per unit times the number of units we sold. And so if X represents the number of units sold, then price per unit times X is revenue. The break-even volume is a specific number, and it refers to the number of units, the value of x, uh, that you need so that the revenue equals the total cost. So on slide 6, we want to find x such that the price per unit times x equals the fixed cost plus the variable cost per unit times x. And if we just algebraically um, manipulate and solve for x, we find that the break-even volume is equal to the fixed cost divided by the selling price per unit divided by the variable cost. Now, sometimes this denominator here, the price per unit minus the variable cost, has a name, and that's called the contribution margin. And uh, so this is how much of the selling price isn't going toward the variable cost. Now if your actual volume 
is less than the break-even volume, then it means that you're not selling enough to cover all your costs, so you have a loss. If your actual volume is greater than the break-even volume, then you have a profit. Let's move to slide number seven, and we're going to start building a graphical model of what's going on here. It really helps to understand uh, break-even analysis to look at it graphically. So we're going to start by looking at fixed cost with volume increasing on the x-axis. You can see that the fixed cost doesn't vary depending on what the volume is because after all it is fixed. Let's go to slide number seven and you'll see that if we plug in the variable cost on top of the fixed cost to get the total cost line we end up with a line uh, that has a positive slope and uh, it starts out at what fixed cost is and it goes up from there. So the total cost line is real important to us. Let's go to slide number nine. Now we're adding the total revenue line to our model and you can see that when we sell no units we don't have any revenue so we're at zero. But we go up at a, with a line that has a slope equal to the selling price of the um, product. Where the revenue and total cost lines intersect is the break-even point and the volume there is called the break-even volume. And this is a very important concept. Most companies will know what their break-even volume is because they know until they hit that point they don't have any profit. And break-even volume can be useful in a lot of different contexts. For example, I'm on the board of a um, uh, private Christian school and we know what our break-even point is in terms of number of students. We know that we have to have so many students enrolled so that we're at least not having a loss. And so most companies know what this point is. I would say this, if they don't know what it is, they could be in trouble. Let's move to slide number 10. Here you can see a dark shaded area and what that's referring to is uh, the difference between the revenue line and the total cost line in that area represents uh, profit. So over where uh, volume X is, uh, the difference between those two lines represents the profit at that volume. Let's go to slide number 11. Now we're looking to the left of the break-even point. Here we didn't generate enough revenue to take care of our costs and so we have a loss. And so the break-even analysis is a really nice picture of where where profit starts and what kind of uh, situation we're in depending on what our volume is. Let's go to slide number 12, our uh, last slide for this presentation. Break-even analysis, in order to perform it, you need to uh, collect the information required uh, to make the analysis such as fixed costs, variable cost per unit, and you need to estimate the selling price of the product. That can be done based on either some market analysis, seeing what the competition is doing and estimating what what you ought to be able to sell yours for, and maybe even doing some market testing. From the break-even analysis, then you determine what the break-even volume is, and if that is reasonable, in terms of estimated sales, uh, that's good to know for your uh, sales force and for marketing purposes and for budgeting. If your estimated sales volume is not above the break-even point, then you need to make some adjustments. And in part two of the break-even analysis, we'll be looking at some things that will help you understand how to make uh, just those kinds of adjustments. So anyway, that's the end of um, this presentation, and I'll see you in presentation number four.